hello students those of you who are giving the practical examination or are aiming for the first professional practical biochemistry examination or even pathology in second semester examination you will be asked to perform an estimation that is also known as glucose oxidase peroxidase we often abbreviate it as godpod method right it's very easy very basic given to every student but you know what the very basic very easy is actually the most important area where you can fail so today we will be discussing all the probable viva questions the practical viva questions and ultimately the question that might lead to grand viva from this topic the very first question uh, which the examiner will ask you is what is the result of your estimation it means what is the value of blood glucose you got so you might have got a blood glucose value of 80 mg per dl or it may be 129 mg per dl or it may be 200 mg per dl 250 300 it may be anything very important that is the unit milligram per deciliter you should always tell the unit that is the first point the examiner will notice if you don't say unit if you just say i have got 80 i have got 100 150 that is a big red flag they will uh, deduct marks right so after you have told that is a value that is your value okay the second question they will ask you what do you think is it normal or is it abnormal very 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 important the moment you answer it it will decide your fate so what should be your answer to answer that you need to know something what do you need to know you need to know the normal value normal range of blood glucose right so what is the normal range of blood glucose because if you tell it if you write i, I mean if you tell the single word okay it is normal it is abnormal it is high it is low it may not satisfy the examiner or it will be uh, asked with a follow up question what is the normal reference range why do you say it is high or low right and why do you say it is normal or abnormal so you need to know right so in order to know that you i will uh, just directly link to the uh, page that is you need to know the values so what is the value you need to know the ada or american diabetic association criteria please don't say the value is 70 to 100 or 70 to 110 80 to 110 whatever is written in your book it is not right it may not be right so what you should say you should only and only mention the american diabetes association criteria right and the values that come along with it okay so what are those values i will again write it for you if the sample patient is fasting so very important you need to know whether the sample is fasting or a postprandial or a random sample without that knowledge it is not possible for you to comment whether it is normal or abnormal if the patient is fasting it is a fasting sample the normal range is 70 to 99 mg per dl everything is in mg per deciliter all right and in order to diagnose the patient to be diabetic it has to be more than equal to 126 mg per deciliter fine so there is a range of 100 to 125 this is the pre diabetic range okay this is for the fasting sample what about the post prandial sample the sample that is taken 2 hours after meal all right here the diagnostic criteria for diabetes is more than equal to 200 mg per dl all right here it is 70 to 139 mg per dl that is for normal and the pre diabetic range is 140 to 199 you have to remember all of these three okay in order to comment whether something is normal or abnormal so suppose today you get a value of 129 all right without the knowledge of fasting or postprandial it is impossible for you to comment whether that is a normal value or abnormal value right whether it is normal range or abnormal range why because the same thing is considered normal postprandial 
but it is considered highly diabetic if it is a fasting sample so without the knowledge what type of sample it is so you may ask the examiner ma'am if the sample is a fasting sample then it is belongs to a diabetic range then it will belong to the pre-diabetic range if the sample is postprandial then the sample is normal however for all practical purpose if you get the value that is more than 200 then you can easily comment that is a diabetic sample right because irrespective of fasting or postprandial it is above the cutoff value of the pp fine so that is number one the next question they will tell you if they say that you are answering the ADA criteria they will again ask you about they might ask you about HbA1c so you should also know the value of HbA1c or the reference range for diabetes it is more than 6.5 gram per deciliter gram percent very important the unit of blood glucose and HbA1c is a different here it is less than 5.7 so between 5.7 to 6.5 is the pre-diabetic range they might ask you one or two question about hba1c what is it what is glycated hemoglobin how does it help i have got separate video on that but just know this it helps in understanding the previous three months 120 days of glycemic control right because our postprandial fasting blood glucose value may be high or low even if the patient is diabetic or non-diabetic suppose the blood is collected early it may be falsely high suppose the blood is collected too late or the proper meal is not taken a diabetic patient may have a suboptimal value however if we check the value of hba1c we can diagnose diabetes therefore they will ask you next the criteria for diagnosis of diabetes and again ADA has clearly mentioned A1C more than 6.5 or mind it fasting plasma glucose or fasting blood glucose more than equal to 126 you don't need to remember the millimole because that is in the uh, United States right we don't use that uh, convention over here and 2 hour plasma glucose more than 200 or very important in a patient with classic symptoms of hyperglycemia hyperglycemic crisis means a patient of dka or hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma or classic features means polydipsia polyphagia polyuria polyneuropathy all those features this can be there we can diagnose diabetes if the one random blood glucose is there and few features however you see or 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 there is a star okay why there is a star in absence of unequivocal hyperglycemia means suppose fasting is normal postprandial is abnormal what do we need we need two abnormal tests from the same sample or two separate test sample results very important we need two different cases of abnormal value in order to diagnose so this is about the diagnostic part right however the exam does not end there or rather examiner might not even go in this area right they may tear you to shred in the very basic thing so what are the very basic thing right very basic thing is what is the principle of the reaction right this is a very common thing you might be noticing because simply mixing a uh, thousand microliter and 10 microliter and putting it in the calorimeter a technician can do a even a class 5 student if he is taught to mix he can do that's not expected from you need you must know the principle so this is the principle the gluc what is got god is glucose getting oxidized to gluconic acid and that gluconic acid is being acted upon i mean the h2o2 is formed in that reaction right and the h2o2 again helps to convert the four amino antipyrin that is already present in the GODPOD reagent to form a quinonamine complex that is red color but this is not the complete reaction right so other than GODPOD there is also another enzyme that is mutarotase so this is actually the complete reaction so alpha D glucose gets converted to beta D glucose first because glucose oxidase can only work on beta d glucose so this is muta rotation examiner might ask you the phenomenon of muta rotation from there they can go into isomerism anomerism all those things because alpha and beta are 
anomers right and they might also ask you alpha d okay what do you explain capital d and capital l isomerism minded it, these are not dextro and liver rotatory these are the convention that we name based on the position of h and oh on d glycerol dehyde from which it is derived you can read that in the very first chapter of carbohydrate chemistry i'm not i'm just here to tell the questions what you need to know right so mutarotase glucose oxidase peroxidase there are three enzymes okay next the very next question examiner might ask you is how did you calculate then you already know that that uh, i mean od of the test minus od of standard divided by um, od of test minus blank divided by standard minus blank multiplied by concentration of standard how did you find concentration of standard it is provided okay how did you find od of test sample and blank your center might provide you with the od of standard and blank and you might only need to measure the od of sample or you need to measure all the three there lies another question how did you measure with what equipment you need to know the parts of colorimeter very important you need to know what is the principle of colorimetry so beer lambert's law the incident light and the emergent light the ratio all right the absorbance is proportional to concentration with path length is constant the absorbance is proportional to the path length when concentration is constant over here path length is constant we are using the same length of cuvette for all three very important specifically beer's law so beer lambert law you need to know one more thing you need to know is 500 5 nanometer or for more students friendly cal calorimeter it will be 500 nanometer you might need to set the setting on 50 that's what it is mind it it is calorimeter that measures color not calorimeter all right so from here examiner might go into various metabolism carbohydrate metabolism various diabetic criteria complications of diabetes but know this if you are prepared with these five six seven eight questions the very impression that you set on the examiner is very high and if you fail to answer any of this question that is a big red flag an examiner might give you a bad mark or she might even fail you so very important you be prepared with the glucose oxidase peroxidase test dod pod that we say very basic and feel free to post any question feel free to reach me out on social media feel free to dm me with any query of yours and i'll be happy to answer each and every query of yours i'll be bringing more such practical viva related question to you and i hope this video was very helpful if you find this video helpful please uh, post a comment and give this video a like and i'll see you soon with another video till then bye and take care